We're here with Olivier de Rechouf, the Executive Director of the Family Business Network. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me about the Family Business Network. What do you do? Family Business Network uh, is the federation of a uh, national association of family businesses around, around the world. It's been created a little over 20 years ago and uh, it promotes the, uh, the success and sustainability of family businesses worldwide. But family businesses much, must be different from country to country, culture to culture. They are, in a sense, um, culturally wise, but uh, the, um, the philosophy of family business uh, uh, is, is the same wherever you go around the world. The owners uh, you know, think long term and want to keep the, the business in the family. Are there things that you can generalize about family business, why one would start a family business in the first place? Most of the entrepreneurs who start a business don't start it uh, as a family business. It really uh, um, you know, takes probably 15, 20, 25 years until the moment you decide that you're not going to sell that business. And the, the, the reason why you've devoted 25 years of your, uh, you know, uh, of your life to this was not to sell you know, at the end was not to sell it, but really to pass it to, um, to the next generation. For an outsider coming in to a family-owned business or family-controlled business, what are some of the, the kind of impediments that he or she might face? The short answer to this is, um, is probably the emotions, you know, that are linked to, um, to, the, to the ownership. We surveyed and, and, and found out that uh, close to 70% of the businesses worldwide were still family-owned. And, and then that family dimension then took a very, a very strong uh, uh, role, you know, in the, um, in the, uh, in the, that economy uh, and, uh, and the model of the family business, the, the sustainable model of family business uh, developed. Uh, and um, currently, uh, when a business calls uh, in the transition period from a generation to, to, uh, to, to another, the success or failure of that transition uh, lies at 80% on soft factor and only 20% of hard, on hard factor. Where what do you mean by the soft and hard factor? I, I mean by that it's not the, it's not the, the P&L or you know, the bottom line of, of the business. It's how the, the family uh, dimension was managed long before you know, on who is going to take over. I mean, specifically when businesses, uh, you know, reach their uh, six, seven, eight generation, there might be hundreds of family shareholders. And, uh, and the longevity of the business is how are those family shareholders, um, you know, respect each other? How do they understand what their role is? So that's, that's what I mean, is that uh, many of the uh, large businesses understood that they needed to devote time to manage that family relation, that there are very good managers out there. But you know, the one who could manage the, uh, the emotional dimension uh, had to be a family uh, business uh, member, the one we call the CEO, the chief emotional officer. Oh. <laughs> So is it a disadvantage that, I mean, it sounds like it, in a way it's a, an advantage to be a family-owned business, but it could also be a disadvantage. If you do talk to an entrepreneur, uh, um, he, he just started thing and uh, he doesn't have the rest of the family, you know, on his back looking at how he does it. Uh, and every, everybody out there who have not been in a family business think that, you know, it's, 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 it's just wonderful. You're, you're the crown prince, you know, you're, you're the next in line. You don't have to worry about your wealth, about whether you'll do right or wrong. In reality, I think the, the uh, owners would look at um, whoever might come from the family and work in the business and make it much, much harder on them than they would to anybody else, just because they, uh, they just want to make sure that they will be respected in the, um, you know, in the business. This is key. Does an economic crisis affect a family-owned business differently than a non-family-owned business? You know, they, they are used to the crisis. They, uh, many of the European families you know, have gone through two wars and the business are still around. Uh, so, in, you know, an economic downturn, yes, they'll look at it, but they know what to do. The, the, the decision process is very short. Uh, they can, you know, agree with the family not to pay dividend for some years, 
which is uh, which usually the, the family agree on. You know, if it's a, a way to keep uh, you know the employees and not lay, lay off people, I don't. I can't think of many quoted companies who can do that. What about globalization? What role has that played in affecting family-owned businesses? I think it's been a very uh, challenging um, to some of the uh, eldest businesses which were uh, uh, created in, in the past century and who were very uh, grounded and located in uh, where, wherever um, they were in the world, while um, the emerging market or the uh, Asian market, they, they, they started their business in a, global, in, in a global world already. So I think the comparison between how an Indian company adapt to the global world versus how a, th a thousand Italy uh, you know, pasta maker adapts, it's a, it's a bit different. And that's really where the, the culture plays a big role. Um, the reality is um, that most of the uh, mid to large size family owned businesses are now global. Any advice for INSEAD students who might have the ability to go into a family owned business? It's a great, just a great opportunity, providing that, um, uh, you know, you, um, you want, you, you buy into the, the values of the family. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, there's been some good, uh, bad, and, uh, and ugly uh, examples in that sense. I think you have to understand that family owners are incredibly loyal. They will uh, let you do the job properly. Yeah, you wouldn't have the, the pressure of the market of each quarter. You know, if you if, if you if the uh, family strategy is clear, um, uh, working for family business is just so much easier. It's so much easier. You're in direct contact with the you, with the family board. Um, again, they are courageous. They go. Uh, they they walk the talk, uh, and this makes a very very big difference versus whatever other model of uh, you know, companies around the world. Great. Thank you very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you very much. Lisa.